Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. And I've had this Fabriano watercolor block link since, I don't know, two years in my art supplies and I didn't really like it once I first got it, but recently I did some uh, pieces with it just, just to pass some time and enjoy the process and this little bookmark i posted on my instagram actually again i made it with this and made me rethink it so today i thought i'd do some loose watercolors because because watercolor is the medium i'm most familiar with even though i mostly do watercolor pencils here but that way i feel most comfortable and i just want to see some loose uh how some loose painting is going to perform some information this is cold press it has fine grain so we do get some texture from this paper it's 25 percent cotton and the rest is uh, synthetic fiber well it's not synthetic i believe it's actually wooden pulp and it's 200 grams the normal sketchbook i always use this by hannah Mueller is as well uh, 200 grams here are some well and wet that i have done on it some paintings i've done in my spare time so i do know i've used this for many years i know 200 grams can handle a good amount of water if the paper is produced adequately and i'm just going to take off my bracelet because it keeps banging against the desk so this is actually a block meaning it is glued down on all sides so it stays flat but i'm not too happy with it so i'm gonna tape it uh just in case and this angle right here is not taped this is where you uh, take away your paintings from without uh, bring out a knife and butchering it so i'm gonna start by taping this down because i don't have much faith in this paper and apologies if i speak extra quietly than the usual it's about 1 a.m right now my neighbor's child just stopped crying so i feel like i can do some midnight mayhem here well mayhem i'm just doing some paintings here and talking to myself So I'm just taping everything down with some masking tape I got from the hardware store, from the painting style, the painting style with the big rollers that you paint your home with. This is not the artist tape, as far as I know. And the last bit here. Oh, I actually skipped a bit in this angle, so I'm just going to get another tiny piece. Okay, and then try to match it. Something of the sorts. I have a loose idea of why I want to paint, and I actually have a reference picture for that, so I'm going to start by well, I actually already added a couple of drops to my Aquinacridone Rose and Taylor Green here. And I actually did a little pillow with them. I just want to swatch them out and see if this was the right color I want to use, the right combination I want to use for my painting. So I'm just going to mix directly onto this because it's the same thing. I just want to make sure I had my ratios correctly so i'm just taking some pink and i'm taking some water probably shouldn't use a bigger brush for this but preparation is not our strong force here and i keep taking pink and more pink because we have a big background to work with and more warm because i want to get a very very light lavender color actually surprisingly enough when you mix red and green especially quinacridone rose and taylor green you get a very very nice violet as you can see well i don't know if you can see on camera 
I want to get some more ore onto this. I actually like that. Maybe a bit more green. And I'm just testing it on my toilet paper to see if I have the shade I want. So I just add more water to my brush and I'm going to start bringing this down. You know, this brush is way too tiny. I'm going to get my... bigger one. Okay, much better. And just bring everything down and up. I'm not going for a flat wash. I want some lighter areas, some darker areas. Bring it all the way down, work it in. Okay, I want to have some horizontal lines. They're a bit more pronounced. Just like that. And since the background is wet, they're going to very softly diffuse into the background. Now I want to let this uh, completely dry. I'm not going to use a blow dryer. I just want to let uh, the moisture and the pigments sink into the paper. I can see it's already starting to rise much more significantly. I don't want to tilt this too much. I hope you can see how much it has risen. Rise, rose, risen. I don't know how to conjugate verbs, I'm sorry. But maybe it will be good for practice. Like, surprisingly enough, uh, this galaxy I did with this paper, well and wet, like, it's not too bad once it dries, and the colors are nice and saturated, so that's why I have my hopes up right now. I'm just going to let this dry, and we'll be back whenever it dries. So, it's been about half an hour. This paper does dry slower than uh, what I'm used to than my Animula watercolor book. I don't know why that is, maybe because it's part cotton and takes longer for that reason. I don't know, I'm just assuming right here. And I want to show you, I don't know if this will focus, how we got a bit of a cauliflower kind of look, how it got streaky between those lines I did. It didn't fully dissolve softly, we got some streakiness and it's a bit prominent. So if you want to paint flat, backgrounds or, I don't know, flowers, bells, buildings, urban sketching. This isn't really that helpful for it. may be an issue, but I just want to see if I can use it for practice and how it will overall behave. Because I used to use a Fabriano Artistico pure cotton paper and I really, really loved that. I did not love the price, but the paper quality was very good. It's actually one of the papers I recommend on my Amazon page, if anyone has ever checked that one out. I actually wanted to get that one, but my local art store uh, was sold out and they just had this one, so that's why I ended up getting this one. And I'm just mixing some more of that quinacridone rose taylor green mix 
with my big brush to save time. And here it did this uh, weird thing, so I'm going to try and cover that up with a uh, mountain going diagonal. So I'm actually just going to do the mountain with this brush and bring it down, down, down. And before it starts to dry on me, I'm going to get my tinier brush. And do some fuzzy tops, some tree tops. I'm just taking the extra steps here because I have good paint and I have good brushes, but I'm not too sure about uh, the paper. That's why I'm trying to compensate, if you will, on the paper quality with um, the other two factors and painting. I want to add some color here and bring it down. I don't care too much about this side because I'm going to be covering it up with another mountain layer on. Like so. And while that dries, and since the background is already dry, I just want to make sure my brushes are clean. I really love this color scheme, honestly. I will say, since the background is already dry, I'm going to take a 5 cents piece and try and figure out where I want a little moon. And I'm using this marker. I'm not sure if it's going to show. If it does not show, I'm just going to use paint instead. I don't know if you can see it. I'm just going to fill this up. It's a bit streaky, but it shows, so I'm fine with it. I want to add some and stars. I'm going to make some bigger and some smaller. This feels like it's dry. I don't know, I don't want to accidentally bleed, but I'm touching it and it's not coming up. A nice thing I noticed, it does not lift up the paint you have already laid down and it does not tear when you add multiple layers. So far we're up to two layers and I'm going to do a third one. You know, I usually don't do more than three layers. So that's uh, as far as we are going to test today. And again, I'm getting my quinacridone rose. And a good amount of thalo green. Okay. And now I want this to come across, so something of the swords. And I'm using the tip of the brush to make it more defined a bit. But don't make it everything on uh, the same height. Some taller, some shorter. You know the drill by now. Then go beneath them with more paint. And I bring it down. It 
a bit scratchy. It does not really let the paint flow freely and it does tend to dry up fast, but it does not dry up fast. It's a bit of contradicting because if I leave it be, it's gonna dry very fast. But if I go and paint the second layer, if I have not wait enough time, it bleeds into the second layer. It's dry, but it's not dry. It's the strangest thing ever, honestly. Okay, and I'm just going to, while that dries, I'm going to add some more stars, just randomly tapping with my pen. I usually get the Posca ones, but uh, they've been, they have not been available in the country for pretty much ever since 2020. So I picked this from the same art store I picked uh, the sketch pad from. It's not too bad, it's a bit more scratchy than what I'm used to. You don't get like acrylic paint level coverage. But it's definitely usable. It's actually what I used for all of the line art on, on this bookmark here of the outlining and the stars. If you want a better look on this, just go to my Instagram page. It's gonna be linked down in the description box along with uh, all of the supplies I have used, the reference picture, and also my uh, Patreon page where I always upload uh, traceables of my paintings, of my YouTube tutorials, and I do monthly exclusive full-time paint along with me style videos similar to this one. And we have other nice things in case you'd like to check that out and support me and the channel. Link will be down in the description box. Feels like it has dried. So I'm just going to sign. But since this is textured paper, I'm going to wait 15 minutes for it to fully, fully, fully dry because it is textured. And if I tape it off and it's not fully dry, I may risk ripping uh, the edges of my page. So I'm gonna wait for it and we'll see each other in a bit. So it untapes pretty easily. Ouch. As it dried, it did get more flat than what we started with. So that's interesting. And I'm just using a uh, self squares here and I'm using on uh, the edge that has the numbers on it to stick it into the corner like so. And I'm just using it basically as a knife, but if I did use a knife, I could cut through the pages beneath, so that's why I'm using a ruler instead. It's just much safer. Plus, I can't be trusted with sharp edges. I'm just a really weird one, let's say. Okay. Pages in the back seem to be pretty dry. They have not buckled, which is a good sign. This is the final painting. And to give out my um, verdict, I would not really suggest uh, this paper to beginners or people that are unfamiliar with the media. It is more to somebody who is more advanced, knows to work their way around, and is just looking for a cheaper uh, pad where to exercise and throw some random ideas. I do still prefer my Animula sketchbook and the Canson Excel series better than this. I'm not really sure what their current prices are as of this moment because prices go up and down like crazy these days. But I just wanted to show you here, this is another Fabriano sketchbook. It's actually the one I used in 2019. Again, it's a uh, Fabriano paper, but it was bound by a local store. And I don't know if you can tell 
Rihanna Academy 200 GSM. The difference is this is pure cellulose, this is part cotton. So in theory, this should be the lower grade paper. And also this is not meant for war media, it's more of a mixed media paper. And this is specifically meant for watercolor, as the pad says. So I just want to show you some pieces I did with their cheaper quality, not as advanced paper. So you can really deduce uh, your own opinions about it. The main thing I didn't like is the streakiness, how... I don't know if you can tell, it just went up and down, up and down. And then it dried really funky around here and it skipped some bits. I don't know why. It's good for practice, don't get me wrong. I would probably not use it for tutorials because I want them to go smoothly. I have limited storage, I can't really risk it. And this is their cheaper quality, some paintings I have done with it. These are the watercolor ones, that's why I'm skipping lots of pages because I've used our media as well and would not be a fair comparison. I don't know if I did this on Instagram or YouTube. I did this one on YouTube a couple of years ago. This is another watercolor piece. And the rest, I believe, are just gouache paintings. Not tremendously bad, would not recommend it to beginners. If you find this cheap on sale, you just need some paper to sketch out your ideas, great. But if you're just starting, I would not suggest this because it is unpredictable how the paper will behave with water. So keep that in mind. I hope you got some value from this video. I'd like to give a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for the month of August. And thank you all for watching. We'll see each other in the next one. Bye bye.